Hey there folks, uh, what I'm not going to do today is give you the whole usual spiel and intro uh, because it's only been a week since I last did Imperial Fists and this is not a full-on how I paint things. Uh, what I'm going to try and do is quite quickly blast through some of the basic steps of this and show you how I would add a bit of white to your Space Marine veterans. If you're going to paint a Codex compliant chapter, whether it be Ultramarines, Imperial Fists or someone else in that vein, then it means your veterans, whether it is your Stern Guard or your Terminators, if any of those happen to be on the horizon for some reason, <laughs> they are going to be wearing white shoulder trim and white helmets. So because so much of my speed painting methods tend to revolve around the order in which things are done, I thought it would be worth revisiting that for getting a nice smooth finish on that white as quickly as possible. Now this will work for any chapter uh, and yeah, it's nice and simple. So I am going to suggest, if you haven't seen it already, to check out the original Imperial Fist painting guide, and I'll chuck that in the description too. Uh, but yeah, all of the paints will be listed in the description. Let's have a look at this. So after having assembled your miniature, cleaned everything off, the first thing to do is to prime it. Now this fella I've primed with Wraithbone, and ordinarily, I'd say this is where you want to go back and tidy up any bits that might have been missed and so on. But somebody actually suggested something remarkable to me the other day, and I'm going to share it with you now, which is to do the black bits first. Because this is going to be easier than turning around later and uh, having to, what's the word, tidy up more carefully around the base coat of the armor that you've already painted. So I'm using Black Templar, and I'm going to lay down over all of the bits that are going to be metallic as well. Let's flick them around. These little bits, like his undersuit. Now I've got the chance to lay down this Black Templar without worrying about hitting any yellow or blue or whatever armor color you're using for your miniature. So I'm quite keen to give it a shot this way. Let's see what happens. All right, now hopefully you can excuse the camera jumping around like this. I am trying to get a feel for where it's going to be easiest for me to see over it and still show you what I'm doing. So, fingers crossed. What I'm going to move on to is actually base coating the white. Now, this is going to be the same for any Codex compliant chapter that you're painting. You know, First Company has white trim and white helmets for its veterans. So I'm using Corax white, and you'll see because I haven't laid down the yellow yet in the shoulder pad, I can be fairly quick about putting this on. And now if you are painting, for example, Ultramarines, and you've already primed this dude with blue, then again, just chuck this on now. Don't be, don't be shy about it. And you can tidy with that blue later, same as I'm going to do with this fella here. Now Corax White can be, there we go, can be a bit of a tricky one. Uh, what I suggest is the first time you open it, uh, go ahead and chuck in a few drops of Lamian Medium. It doesn't have to be very much. And uh, you will benefit from adding an agitator. A couple of little steel ball bearings or something. And uh, yeah, it works fine for me. A lot of folks don't have great luck with Corax White. Uh, by contrast, I love it. Uh, it works really well for me. So that's what I've done to get the most out of this particular paint. Give it a shot and it might work for you too. I've also gone ahead and painted in the tabard with that Corax White. Um, you're not going to see that on every veteran. Terminators, for example, don't very commonly wear them, so it's up to you. If your miniature's got one, go ahead and base it with that. Now at last, I've got Wraithbone. And what I'm going to do with this now is what was suggested to me, to go over and tidy up the black bits that I might have splurged, and finally to fill in any bits of the primer that might not have been perfect when I first sprayed them. So this, probably want a little bit more water in my paint than that, to be honest. Uh, but this is a slightly more careful process. As we just tidy up as we go. Now at last we can start applying the contrast, which is going to be the base of the armor. Same as in the other video. So, I'm painting an Imperial Fist. No great surprise, I'm going to use Imperial Fist. Just remembering and reminding myself pretty constantly that this time I don't want to paint in his helmet. So take your time here. Uh, you'll find that a large, sorry, a medium shade brush will work pretty well for most of this. 
especially if you look after them and it keeps a decent tip. So around all of the armor, and uh, the wonderful thing about this Imperial Fist stuff is that it doesn't it doesn't have quite the same properties as some of the other ones in the contrast range, but the bonus of that is that you don't get that same visible streaking. You'll see as I'm applying it, I am still keeping my brush moving in the same direction as much as possible. And uh, if you do have to swipe sideways, just follow up with a quick flick downwards to, uh, to shift that contrast to follow the same, same direction. You can tell I'm concentrating because my uh, brain starts dribbling out the side of my ear. Anyhow, let's go around all of the armor and paint them in with Imperial Fist. Now that isn't the quickest method for getting a marine yellow. You know, obviously if you start from a yellow primer, you'll probably find it quicker to do those other little details. But I would suggest to you that this is still quite a simple and easily replicated method. So up to you, and I do suggest always check out other, you know, other painters. What are they doing that you might be able to rob ideas from? <laughs> There's never one way to paint something. What I've got is my wraith bone and a little old makeup brush here. What I'm going to do, same as most of my marine methods, is to lightly dry brush at the edges of detail. Uh, with wraith bone, you can actually be quite generous over yellow because it will look pretty good. So I'm going to go over all of the yellow. And you'll see in some areas, like on his uh, snoot here, I have blopped him with a little bit of that Imperial Fist. But save your clean up until later. So just going straight over everything now with that dry brush. Now the cool thing about Wraithbone is that it actually dries fairly subtly once it's on. So you can be really quite generous with it while you're dry brushing. Some colors, you've got to be quite finicky, but in this case, you can go pretty wild with it and tidy up with some of that Imperial Fist over top if you need to. What I'm going to use now is Baal Red. Let's sneak up under his arm here to get to the chest eagle from this angle. Okay, now you'll see I am slowly making a mess of some of these areas, but I'm saving my cleanup to last because most of the other uh, base coats we're going to apply are going to work like tidy up stages. So I'm applying now, this is Lead Belcher, and this is going to go over all of the metallic details. Now on some marines I would prefer to use something like Iron Hand Steel, which is a little bit lighter, but with Imperial Fists being so bright themselves, I tend to find a slightly darker metal color for their gear just works a little better. So away we go with this now, won't take too long. Now, unfortunately, there isn't really a quick way of doing all those little dots. Uh, just load up your brush, take your time. Remember as well that you can go back to Wraithbone and dot in a little bit of Imperial Fist over the top to tidy up. What I've got now is Retributor Armor, and I'm going to apply this to bits I want to be gold. You'll see there's not really very many of these on this fella in particular, uh, but anywhere that I do want to be gold, I've laid down just a little bit of Lead Belcher first, because it will cover just a little better over black. Now that is most of the base coats done, so what I'm going to do is turn back to Corax White and do a little bit of tidy up on those splurges. Uh, if you do need to tidy up the black areas that you've done, then what I'd recommend would be a true black acrylic, so something like uh, Abaddon Black or similar. Now the final base coat to give some thought to is his tabard. You could leave this white, I think quite happily, it would work quite well once we've shaded it. But what I'm going to do is hit it with a wee blast of Skeleton Horde. And same as with the Imperial Fist from earlier, try and keep your brush going in the same direction as you apply it. Now what I've got here to shade our fella is Marine Juice. Now I could do a whole video on Marine Juice at some point, and I probably should. But suffice to say, the recipe is equal parts of Lamian Medium, Reichland Flesh Shade, and now I use Dark Tone from the Army Painter. The new Nolan Oil just doesn't have the same guts that the old one did. Now, tip for this as well is if you are applying it and you're finding it still a little bit kludgy, you know, it's not going on as smooth as you see what I'm getting, just add a little a couple drops extra Lamian Medium and you'll be fine. So we are going to blanket the entire miniature in this. 
following much the same procedure as everything else. Slap it on, wiggle it around, and then brush your brush in the same direction to smooth things out a bit. So, over everything, every nook and cranny, the white, the yellow, let's go. Now at this stage you'll have something that looks like this. And from here on in, I'm going to do much the same as I have with the other Imperial Fists. So I'm going to skip over a couple of these details and just recommend go check out that video for the full experience, shall we say. We'll start off though, I'll drop a little bit of Baal Red into his eye sockets. And I might actually, you know, I'm going to do that off camera. And we're also going to return to Korax White one last time to brighten up these shoulder pads. And doing the trim this way, so it's a little bit easier to just catch the outside edge. Now one other detail I'm going to apply that wasn't on the Imperial Fist in the first video is going to be just a tiny bit of Vallejo Model Air Steel. Now this you could easily swap out for uh, Runefang Steel or what is it, Stormhost Silver. Uh, I just like how the Vallejo one flows. You tend to find it comes off the brush, the brush rather, very nicely. So there with the last of those highlights applied is our marine. So I've gotten some white in there, a little bit of dawnstone, and I did go over the tabard a little bit with some thin lines over and over again to sort of scratch out a cloth texture on his tabard. Not something you have to do, but I think it looks cool. What I'm going to do now is to pop a varnish on him. Now in the previous video, I turned around and I applied a satin varnish because I pointed out I think it looks better on the table. But matte varnish photographs better. So in order that you can see the difference, I will pop a matte varnish on this guy. And I'm going to use Varnish Plus from Instar to do that. I'll base him up the same way and let's get a look at what he looks like when he is all finished. So there at last is our finished veteran. Now, you'll probably have seen, or will see as this comes around, that there's a little bit of pooling on the back of his legs and on one segment on, I think, his thigh. Now, that's mostly because of the temperature, and I was mucking around a little bit. I wasn't being particularly careful about how I was applying that marine juice. What I would suggest here is do a section at a time, same as you would if you were applying contrast, or you can try adding a gloss varnish before doing the shading step. It will very much require that to finish the miniature, you do matte varnish it, but that will help reduce some of these tide marks. Now as well, something which stands out as I'm watching this fella go around is that when I had done the first Imperial Fist, I talked about not really bothering to highlight the undersuit, so you see the ridged areas in his arms and the back of his legs. But by doing the black parts first, and then that Wraithbone dry brush, by the time those bits were shaded, they've actually come out really well, and I didn't bother highlighting them at all, or as equipment. So, talk about a happy accident. Just something to think about when we're talking about the order in which things are done on a miniature. So this not being a full-on how I paint things, I'm not going to give you the full spiel as we go out. Just to say thanks very much to all of the producers who are making sure that I can carry on doing this stuff with paint and resin, and uh, yeah. Thanks very much for your time. I do want to say, as always, you enjoy the rest of your day.